Hey, what's up, everybody? Time for another community discussion. Remember, if you like the videos, like, sub, silly comment, share, super chat, super like, whatever, PayPal, whatever, if you want. I appreciate it. Thanks. If I run out of breath a lot while I'm making this video, again, my health has not been good for a while again and having a lot of trouble breathing on and off again right now. So anyway, I want to talk about this fake idea that people try to spread in the community that the community is not accepting of people, right? Which is actually totally false. The fighting game community has always been extremely accepting of everybody, race, gender, sexuality, whatever it might be. As a matter of fact, that's why there is so much hate, okay? The fighting game community's problem is not that it is not accepting of enough people. The fighting game's community problem is that it gives power to evil people. There's a phrase that's something like, give a man power if you want to judge his character, right? And we have seen time and time again that the people in power in the fighting game community often are evil people, right? We have also seen time and time again that the fighting game community are trying to cater to a overly radical portion of the LGBTQ. And again, I say this, this is not that all LGBTQ people are evil or anything like that. Again, people, they don't like to talk about it. I used to house LGBTQ people, right? Back when I was in the community winning all those tournaments, people actually used to think that I was gay. I had so many gay friends, right? The LGBTQ is now fucking evil, okay? I, I, I hate to tell you this, the LGBTQ has become the very thing that they say they hate, okay? And I, and I want to show this, okay? Now, let's, let's look at some of this right here because this is what, what stuck out to me. Well, first of all, we got the technicals, guys. I don't think technicals is ever going to do a video on me. Prove me wrong. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And he's showing right here, talking about how, again, the people in power are not good people. Okay? I also want to show this because this always stands out to me. Now, I am not a Umi show connoisseur. I don't know much about this person. So I don't know about all their drama, whatever it is. But I can tell you, I do take delight <laughs> to varying degrees that it seems like every day I wake up to more strive drama more drama in the fighting game community that always seems to happen with lgbtq members and i've said this before the whole fucking fighting game community should just be burned down and start over again hit the reset button <laughs> snap your finger get rid of it the overly radical lb lgbtq right and this is not to say that uh, uh, an lgbtq person could be in charge of the fighting game community and there could very well be good things but unfortunately you have given power to the overly radical side of the LGBTQ who are consistently evil. Now, again, this is not me saying that I am a connoisseur of Umi Show, and I'm not saying that they are evil per se, but apparently, I want you just to take this at uh, face value. Um, they are involved in some drama themselves. But, but what stuck out to me is this. Umi Show, a transgender person, I'm in therapy and have been getting extensive medical mental health help while distancing myself from past from relationships and am addressing my problems in private. You know what I, I read this says? Well, what the fuck? What LGBTQ person is not getting mental help in the first place? Okay. What does this mean? Saying that you have mental problems is one of the most ridiculous excuses for getting caught doing something fucked up. Now, again, I'm not, I don't actually know their full story. So take, so take exactly how much they actually have done with a grain of salt. But I think it has been shown to be the case many times that often when someone does something evil or does something bad, although they don't actually want to take blame for it, they will try to say, well, you know, I got a mental or I got, I got a mental problem. I'm seeking help. You're an LGBTQ member. You have changed your gender. Were you not in mental getting mental help already? Like how many times have you seen LGBTQ people? non-binary people, whatever it is, switching their gender every fucking five seconds, get caught doing something fucked up, and they'll be like, well, don't worry, I'm getting mental help. 
what the fuck were they doing for you when you thought you were a rhinoceros five days ago? Five days ago, you said you were a bisexual rhinoceros. The day before that, you said you were a cow and they were milking you. You weren't seeking mental help then? <laughs> you know, that, that's my perspective on this. I'm pretty sure you've already been getting mental help. I, I'm gonna, you know, and I, I see something like this. Testament being non-binary and in Bridget being trans might be a bigger W than me winning Evo. No, it's not because it's a retcon. And we've already gone over this. As someone that speaks a little bit of Japanese and can read a little bit of Japanese, we already know it's a retcon. It, it's not a fucking win. Okay? We've gone over this before. Hate to burst your bubble. Okay? Whew. I'm going to tell you. You know what? You know what's funny? People try to say that I'm crazy. Do you know that I have only received, and I say received because this is weird, mental help a couple times in my life. And I wouldn't even say it's mental help, but I was made to go do it. I told the story before that um, it's actually, this is a pretty crazy story. When I was young, I had that dream. It was a very vivid dream that my dad was going to die. Okay. And I went to my dad that day. I woke up and I was like, I'm really afraid you're going to die. It was very, like a very vivid dream. And he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to die. And I remember crying as a kid. And you know what he did? He went and he got a gun and shot himself right after that. Now, I didn't see him pull the trigger, but I did see the blood on the floor. And at face value, that is a, a, a pretty crazy story, right? And, you know, they made me see a counselor after that. But, you know, I, I got older and it was, it's kind of like surreal. to You know, it's a very, it's a pretty crazy story. At face value, that's a crazy story, right? And then when you go on disability and, you know, dying and all this kind of stuff, when you get disability originally... They do make you see a, I guess, what do you, did they make you see? I forget what they did. You have to see some kind of like a, a, a psychologist or something to make sure you don't have a brain malfunction or something. But whatever the case, I question, you know, what kind of, these, these people getting mental help for their fake problems almost. It's just ridiculous. What, what, what kind of problem, what kind of problem have you had in your life that you are using it as an excuse for your evil. Evil. Don't make me keep doing this voice. It's going to be too hard with my health as it is. Again, the problem is not that the fighting game community is not inclusive enough or not, or that it's not the, that the fighting game community is too exclusive or it's not inclusive enough. The fighting game community is incredibly diverse. That's why there is so much fucking hate in the community because the community sees once you start playing video games that just because you're a nerd, that doesn't mean you're supposed to be good at video games. How you look is not indicative of your skill. Your mental illness of changing your gender every other day cause playing a different character does not dictate if you are good at a video game or not. I'm just gonna post this again because I know this made this one guy mad. Why do you have to post? Why do you have to be on video when you talk? Why do you have to show yourself? There you go. Do you want to suck it, you little fucker? Maybe I'll give you a fucking freebie. I'll give you one fucking free nude on OnlyFans, you fucking freak. <laughs> I, I cannot believe I was getting messages. I can't believe you would ever show your body on. Your videos, you're a terrible person. Fucking kill yourself, Jesus Christ. Pretend to kill yourself, more likely. More likely pretend to fucking kill yourself. Fucking ridiculous, dude. Again, the fighting game community, you know, an example I've used before is when I first got into video games, when you're brought up, you're told that maybe the nerds, this like the, the stereotypical nerd with, with pimples all over their face, glasses, a fat Asian guy, that they are automatically the, the best nerd. And when I went to tournaments and everything like that, I saw a bunch of black dudes. And a bunch of black dudes were the dudes that were beating these nerds. These nerds and all their math problems, they were not the best people at games. They were getting beat by all these, like, you know, hardcore black dudes. And you find out that, oh, maybe a lot of these, you know, black dudes, they didn't want to be involved in drugs, you know? So they went to the arcade and they actually practiced. And now they're beating all these nerds. You know, that was a, like a wake-up call for me as a kid. 
when I first saw that, right? Just like a lot of people probably would be like, oh, there's no way Clayton, Clayton won all these tournaments. Oh my God, look at his abs. I fucking hate him, you know? Maybe I don't look like I've done all the stuff I've done in video games, right? Point is, there's no problem. There's always been gay people in the fighting game community, okay? That's not, you don't, you don't deserve a fucking gold star for being gay or being an LGBTQ member. It's ridiculous. You deserve a gold star for actually being a good person. You know what I mean? For actually doing something in this endeavor, this hobby that you enjoy, right? It's just fucking ridiculous. And then you got to read shit now. And again, I, I do say, take it with a grain of salt. I just can't be bothered to read up on every fucking bit of drama in fucking fighting games. I can barely keep up with it myself. But I do take delight to a certain degree to seeing that another LGBTQ member has drama around them. What else is new? And I do take delight and I roll my eyes and laugh a little bit at them saying that, well, I'm getting mental help. You mean you didn't get mental help before when you changed your gender? They didn't ask you about that? I mean, I, I don't know. I would assume if you're going to change your gender, you probably that you probably should, you know, see a doctor to make sure there's nothing wrong with you. Now, I don't know if this Umi show is a non-binary bisexual rhinoceros and then the next day, a, you know, hippopotamus. I don't know if they're a frog self kind of person because certainly you can be transgender. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. But once you start going and getting into the realm of being non-binary and changing your gender every fucking day, you know, obviously you got a fucking mental problem. You're not a fucking frog, okay? Give me a break, right? This isn't Jurassic Park. You're not changing your gender. You either have a penis. Do you have a penis? You know, I mean, give, give me a fucking break. This shit is ridiculous. But anyway, again, the problem with the fighting game community is not that it's too exclusive or it's not inclusive enough. The fighting game community problem is that you have given power to people that are not good people, okay? It's fucking ridiculous. Look in the mirror. Why the fuck is the Discord run by so many fucking ridiculous, overly radical LGBTQ members that should not have no power whatsoever? We've seen the kind of stuff they have done. And how many times they don't even face any consequences if they do it versus a cisgender person because cisgender people don't have real problems, apparently. You can sexually harass them, like me. Joke about them dying all the time, like me. It's apparently very funny. I mean, that, that Suffer story is a great story. Fucking Suffer. How many fucked up shit was that guy doing? And no one cared until he fucked with another LGBTQ member. Then they're like, oh, I guess, well, I guess we should probably look into that. If he fucks with a cisgender person and is evil, that's okay because they're not a real person. Like, how the fuck that? Why does the community give these people power? It's fucking ridiculous and disgusting. And, I, you know, I, I'm trying to think when it was first became a problem like i still remember years and years ago i saw that motherfucking james chen who again james chen an lgbtq ally a person who seemingly according to mike watson talked to him basically and he even admitted that basically he's been getting paid to lie about me while asking me for help for so long that he doesn't even remember why you have to lie about me but i remember i saw that motherfucker on a stream once and he said what did he say i should find that stream just because it was so ridiculous he said something like being transgender is the most bravest thing you can be in the world or something and he almost started like and he, he like started crying it was like being transgender is the most brave thing you can do in the world what the fuck is wrong with you there's literally people going to war getting shot at you fucking idiot have some fucking respect dude for like other fucking people just fucking, God, the fucking community, like I said, hit the fucking reset button. Burn down the whole fucking thing. The end.